this great man happened to be one of the most influential mathematicians to have ever graced our planet. He's Carl Frederick Gauss, who's often referred to as the Prince of Mathematics, and he has made innumerable amount of contributions to various branches of math and science. Now, what we want to do in this video is to honor the legend by utilizing one of the ideas that according to a story, Gauss stumbled upon when he was merely an eight-year-old boy. Now, here's how the story goes. The class that Gauss was part of was given the task of adding the first 100 natural numbers. So here's how the task looked like. The students had to perform this addition by adding the first 100 natural numbers all the way starting from 1 to 100. Now imagine giving a task like this to a group of 8 to 10 year old students way back in the 1700s. Now if I were the teacher, I would sit back and relax while I let my class flex their addition muscles. But to the surprise of the teacher, Gauss was able to deliver the result pretty quick. Now what we are going to do is, first I'm going to take you through the idea and that idea we are going to apply to arrive to this formula which is the sum of first n terms of an arithmetic progression. Now let's dive in. Now this is what we're doing. We are adding all the numbers starting from 1 all the way up till 100. Now let us suppose we've added all these numbers and the result comes around to be some number called let's say p. Now what Gauss did was he noticed that when the first number and the last number are added the result is 101 and when the second number and the second last number like in this case 2 and 99 when they're added the result is again 101. Now 3 plus 98 101. 4 plus 97, 101. So what he did now was he wrote the numbers backwards. Now let's start from 100, 99, 98, 97, and then let's go all the way till 1. Since this is the same summation, the result would be the same P. Now let's perform the addition. 1 plus 100, 101, 2 plus 99, 101. So you would essentially be getting 101, you know, a hundred times. And since you're adding P and P, the result is going to be two times P. Now this is, as I said, 100, 101 added a hundred times. So this is 100 times 101, which is equal to two times P. And there you go. P is 100 times 101 divided by 2. On simplification, this turns out to be 50 times 101. And there you go. The answer is right in front of us, which is 5050, which is the addition of first 100 natural numbers. Now, isn't that a good idea? And and it's, it's quite logical as well. Now, let's try and utilize this to uh, get to the formula of the sum of first n terms of an arithmetic progression but before we do that i want to give you a fair bit of an idea as to what an arithmetic progression is and then let's go and and understand that now let's try and understand as we discussed what is basically an arithmetic progression so in simple terms an arithmetic progression is a sequence of numbers which increase or decrease by the same amount every time. Like to give you an example, let's say I'm starting my sequence of numbers with three. Now let's say three, I plan to increase by four, or so the next number in the sequence is going to be a seven. Now let's say seven increases by four, I get an 11. 11 increases by four, I get a 15. 15 increases by four, you get a 19. I hope you get the idea, and the pattern goes on and on and on. So this right here is the first number or the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term, the fourth term, and the fifth term. And it goes on and on and on as long as we would like to. Now, let's say we are faced with the challenge of figuring out what the hundredth term is. Or let's say you want to go one step ahead and figure out what the thousandth term is. So we can't go on and on adding uh, four like this. We need a result and the result is 
the nth term is a plus n minus 1 times d where a is the first term and d is called the common difference. Now common difference is the amount by which the numbers either increase or decrease. Now since we want to derive this out let's take the same terminology right ahead. Now let's suppose my, my first term is a. a increases by d so my next term is a plus d. Now a plus d will increase by d. Now a plus d plus d so my next term is going to be a plus 2d. Now a plus 2d increases by d so my next term is going to be a plus 3d. I hope you get the pattern now it's going to be a plus 4d, a plus 5d and then it goes on and on and on for as long as we want it to. Now let's try and understand how this formula comes into the picture. Now as you notice this is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term and this right here is the sixth term. Observe a pattern. The sixth term is written as a plus 5 times d. The fifth term is written as a plus 4 times d. The fourth term is written as a plus 3 times d. Now I think you can easily predict what the seventh term is going to be. That is going to be a plus 6 times d. I hope you've noticed the number here is one less than the number here. Again, the number here is one less than the number here, which eventually means the nth term is going to be a plus n minus 1 times d because the number here has to be one less than the number here. So now the hundredth term would be a plus 100 minus 1 which is a 99d and now let's go ahead and calculate that. a which is the first term in this series happens to be 3 plus 99 times the common difference is 4. So 3 plus 99 times 4, 99 times 4 is a 396. So 3 plus 396 is a 3 99 which is going to be the 100 term of this arithmetic progression. So I think now you're fairly comfortable with what an arithmetic progression is and how do you figure out the nth term of an arithmetic progression. Now let's try and understand the sum of first n terms of an arithmetic progression by using Gauss's logic. Now if we are going to take the same uh, arithmetic progression that we took to uh, that we took in the last slide uh, let's just write it down for you here. Uh, you start with a 3, 3 increases by 4, a 7, then an 11, then a 15, a 19, 23, 27, 31 and let's suppose that's it. So how many numbers are there? There are 8 numbers. Now what I want you to do is I want you to add these 8 numbers. Okay, let us suppose we call the result S8 since we're adding up the eight numbers. Now let's just apply Gauss's idea by writing the numbers backwards. So you start with a 31, then a 27, then 23, 19, 15, 11, 7, and a 3. This is the same summation because the numbers are the same. Then add it as usual. 3 plus uh, 31, 34, plus 34, 34, 34. So you see how many times are we going to get a 34 here? Now S8 plus S8 would give you 2 times S8. So we are going to get a 34 8 times. So this is 8 times 34 which is equal to 2 times S8. So our S8 typically is 8 times 34 divided by 2. Now this could be written like 8 by 2 times. Now this 34 we can write it like 3 plus 31. So now I think we are in a position to safely relate this with this formula right here. So this is nothing but Sn equals n by 2 times the first term plus let's say the last term is L. Now if, if let's say the last term happens to be A plus N minus 1 times D then typically our Sn becomes N by 2 times A plus 
a plus n minus 1 times d. Now on further simplification, you have the result n by 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d, which is the sum of first, uh, sum of uh, uh, the terms of an arithmetic progression. Now I hope you've understood how we've applied an amazing idea to figure out the sum of first n terms of an arithmetic progression. I hope you had fun. Well, more importantly, I hope you understood this whole logic and uh, thank you for watching. Have a good time.